What the f All right, everybody, I'm here at the auction today and my uncle purchased this Toyota Sequoia last weekend. With the holiday, didn't have time to pick it up. We're here today to pick it up. This was an online auction car. It's a two owner Sequoia that I am looking at for the first time here. But I did send it to him as what I recommended to bid and buy. And I think he found a good one. It's got 220-ish thousand miles. Uh, again, two owner. And I'm just looking around myself right now for the first time condition-wise. It's got a million stickers on it, but uh, it came from a nice area. I ran the address and the title, and it looked like a wealthy neighborhood. You know, the back tires, they're not perfect, but they still got some meat on them. Got a little bit of surface rust down here, but I don't see any rot yet unless... Let's take a look at the rocker panels. I mean, you got some areas where they're crispy, but overall... They seem to be in pretty good shape for a New England Sequoia. You look at the frame, the frame looks like it's in great shape. Most of it's still black. I don't see any major rust yet, at least on the frame. You look back at some of the suspension arms back here and the rear differential and these shocks, those got some rust on them. But again, this is a 20 year old New England vehicle. Uh, obviously I'm up here for the holiday. I'm not in Florida anymore. So this is all pretty normal stuff to see. Uh, would you wanna see it in better shape? Sure, but again, this is the most important thing here, your frame. The frame looks excellent. All that stuff is easily replaced. Those shocks obviously need to be replaced and that's a piece of cake that can be done in a matter of minutes. You can uh, sand all this stuff down at POR 15. It'll look brand new like the frame. So uncle, the frame looks good. Uh, at least on this side, the frame's excellent. It's still black. Is it? So it's in good shape, the frame. You got some surface rust on some of the rear suspension components, but you know, the, the big thing with this vehicle is, one of the reasons I was attracted to it, it was recently inspected. Now it's been almost a year now, but regardless, it's been on the road as of recent. So the, you know there can't be anything too wrong with it. Uh, all the tires are around. These are what, General Grabber? Not a bad tire, more of a budget tire, but definitely better than most of the Chinese tires, and they all still have decent tread. So you shouldn't need tires right away, which is good. And they all do match, which is important on a four-wheel drive vehicle. You'll see how we're looking on brakes. Looks like you might need some brake pads up front. And obviously the rotors are a little rusty from it sitting, but that's easy DIY at home stuff. Rear calipers that they've been replaced, but I think you also need brake pads back there. So you just need brake pads all around. Very easy, you can do that at home for under a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? That, that's that's the kind of stuff you see and you say, if that's the worst of it, oh, what no, do this, I care? This, when I saw it last week, I knew this thing was gonna be good. It, you got a nice weather tech. These are expensive. So obviously somebody liked this vehicle enough that they spent the hundred so dollars on the weather tech mat. Third row seats. Even the headliner overall, I don't see any tears, a little bit of dirt, but no tearing. Uh, it was definitely more of a family vehicle than it was someone's work truck, which is good to see. Well, this thing's in great shape. Unk, this is in really nice shape. You were saying these seats were worn out. I don't think so at all. For 220,000 miles, this is in beautiful condition. And I, I bet you that steering wheel is in great shape underneath that cover. This, yeah. this is in very nice shape for a Sequoia. These were family vehicles. Kids would always destroy the interiors. I mean, this thing looks really nice. It's a cleanup nice. So my uncle bought this, is winning bid. I was very impressed. It was the first car he's ever bought at auction. Um, I, I sent him a list of cars to bid on, but I didn't do anything after that. He bought this for $850. After fees, the grand total is around $1,000 for this vehicle. And Sequoia, as you should all know, sell for big money on Craigslist, Facebook, dealerships. Uh, they're well north of three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. So even with higher mileage, and again, this being a two owner, it had no service lights on in the pictures on the uh, listing. My uncle never saw this in person, even though it was an online car. 
He could have came out and looked at it, but they didn't have enough people that day to do startups when he came to see it. So he took a gamble, and I think his gamble should pay off. Let's go ahead, Unc. We'll put the, uh, he's already taken all these stickers off. <laughs> but um, you have the, I have the key in my pocket, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead, get her unlocked, and uh, get the jumper pack on her, and we'll do a first start with you guys, and we'll see how it runs. Like I said, my uncle has not heard this run yet, so. All right, so here we have that 4.7 liter V8. Again, being a New England vehicle, you're gonna see a lot of surface rust, but uh, I'm very impressed with the condition of the frame on this. It is, I don't think these Tundra frames had the issues that the Tacomas did and the Forerunners uh, with them rotting out, like you know, paper and water, but this frame is in great shape for a New England vehicle. Look at how the majority of it's still black. We look at the driver's rocker, no major issues at all. We got some bubbling obviously on the uh, pinch on the pinch welds, but uh, not bad at all for a New England vehicle. I've seen so much worse. This thing is very clean and that explains the recent inspection sticker. Oh, my camera was all zoomed in. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you know, the biggest rust I've seen on it so far is you know, back in the rear area here, which is typical, but nothing detrimental. Can all be cleaned up or can be lived with as is. You get the booster pack on, Unc? Yeah, I don't know. Do you have to turn I think it, it just turns on automatically. Let's just check, make sure it's got some juice. It does. Fingers crossed, prayers to God. <laughs> all right, let's uh, see what she does. We got power. 223,000 miles. Oh, wow. fired right up. Listen to that. Purrs like a kitten. Should have bought two of these. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I wasn't sure if. Now, the only thing I noticed in the picture is it looks like the oil pressure gauge does not work. Uh, I'm assuming it's not low oil pressure because it would at least be on the low line, not just totally pegged down. We'll let it run for a minute, shut it off. We'll check the oil, get a proper reading. Uh, but again, I'm assuming based on the sound of the engine that the oil is not low. The engine sounds excellent. No ticking, no knocking, no anything strange. Uh, we'll just do a quick visual here, but we'll check it when it's got some temperature. Yeah, oh my God, this oil has just changed. Yeah. This has a lot of new parts. This has a lot of new parts. So it sounds like it runs excellent. This thing sounds great. Let's see if we got any misfires going on. Nope, nice and smooth. No puffing from the tailpipe, no odd smoke. Just obviously, you know, cold start in New England. Unk, this is a great buy. I, I would have bought this all day long for what you paid for it. Granted, we haven't driven it yet, but. A big Al red light special. Yeah. <laughs> I told my uncle, go with those donation cars, stay away from the dealer cars. He did buy another dealer car. We won't talk about that one right now. We'll, we'll focus on the good. What is this? Uh, it might, be, it might have been a, a radar or a stereo or something. Oh, it's got yeah. an interesting plug on it. Maybe a dash camera. Yeah, it looks like it's hooked up to, I don't know. Whatever. You got brake pressure, which is excellent. That's good Your brake lines are good. Stop. I'm not going to rev up the engine at all, but let it warm up a little bit. You got nice and clean oil, which was great to see. Oh yeah, this was... She went right into reverse, no problem. That's a good sign right there. Yep, drive, reverse, no problem. Again, your oil pressure gauge is not working, but I certainly don't think you have low oil pressure because you you'd hear it. Yeah. And again, if you had low oil pressure, it'd be on the L. It wouldn't be pegged down all the all way. way. It's that's, just, that's, it's not even registering. You know, it'd be... probably a fuse. Uh, it could be a bad little motor in the cluster that controls that. It could actually be the sensor that goes into the engine block that detects the oil pressure. It's a very easy part to change, especially yeah. in a vehicle like this where there's a lot of room to work. You could change that no problem. I wouldn't mess with that until you get it home. Oh, heck no. I'm God forbid it, it gets stuck in four low. Yeah. You hey, drive it home. The problem at, with it. Yeah. You put it in. Now, but I'm assuming it's probably, this probably is normally in two wheel drive. Uh, I don't think it's a full-time four-wheel drive. No. I could be wrong though, because I, all I see is four high, four low. Usually you'd have a, a selector for, for two-wheel drive. So um, you got a button here though too, that's strange. I don't know much about these. I'm more of a domestic car guy. I know they're great trucks. Um, 
We won't mess with any of that. We're gonna leave it exactly as it is. And look, actually your four wheel drive is on, which again, I think it's full time. Because see these green lights? Yeah. All four are on. We'll look into that more when you get home. Um, oh, all right, that just did something. Again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with it too much. I'd leave it, I'd leave it alone. That's your traction control, VSC, hey, or something like that. Shut up. <laughs> All right, let, let's just leave it for a minute before we move and see if that light stops blinking. Oh, it, it stopped blinking. Oh. I think now you're in two wheel. Oh, okay. I'll be able to tell you right now yeah, if I. Looks like it. Yeah, you're in two wheel now. So that's good. We know. Yeah, you we don't know have to be burning gas. Yeah. <laughs> Right, you might actually need the four-wheel to get out of here, to be honest. Folks, I'm gonna turn the camera off so I can focus on backing the truck out of here. Wow, I'll tell you what, this Sequoia was a great buy. This thing runs fantastic. The four-wheel drive works. We figured out how that works. Everything works, the heat, the AC, the radio. We just tested the sunroof and that works. And this thing, I mean, it runs so smooth. You don't even feel it when you accelerate. There's no misfires, there's no nonsense. The window, well, the most important window works. Because it's winter time, I'm not gonna test the other three. I hate to have a window get stuck and we're driving home, it's 30 degrees. But the most important window works. You don't even feel this thing running. It's holding temperature. Uh, the charge is good. Say like the fuel gauge works. But man, this is a nice truck. Has it got weather techs in the front too? It's got some type of custom liner. And these are great to have for a winter vehicle like this. I mean, I just can't believe ever owned this vehicle. Got rid of it now. This is the prime time to have it. They should have drove it through the winter and uh, dumped it in the spring, but only works out better for my uncle. My uncle had a Lexus. He had an ES330 or an ES300, whatever it is, 2004. Uh, he's had it. He's the original owner. Unfortunately, recently he got T-boned and totaled. Uh, the insurance company gave him a good check for it. And he always sees me buying cars at the auction. And he said, hey, you know, uh, give me some advice. Show me how to do this. And obviously, I live in Florida. But I said, hey, look, this is a great auction in New Hampshire. Here's a list of vehicles I would bid on. And he stole the Sequoia. He stole it. For him to be in a good Toyota truck, especially one like this, fully loaded up, no mechanical issues at this price. This is a $4,000 truck on Craigslist all day maybe even more in the condition it's in because this thing will detail up beautifully. I'm just gonna do a couple more checks on all the fluids, but I'm suspecting this will drive home great. I'm gonna be the one driving it back, so I'll be keeping you guys in the loop about it. All right, so I've been driving the Sequoia for well over 30 minutes now on highway and city. I've had her up to 80 miles an hour. This thing drives perfectly it doesn't pull in any direction it's smooth the transmission shifts like new the steering is tight the heat is great the cruise control works no issues no fault lights nothing i mean my i am so proud of my uncle i said unc if the sequoia is in good shape if you check this this and that and everything's good you pay anything below x amount it's a great deal and he absolutely stole it he paid so much less than i thought he'd have to i thought he was going to pay around 1500 before fees for a sequoia at auction uh and he got this thing for 1100 total after fees out the door and it's great i mean it runs perfect the crazy thing is there was another one that was a 2001 that had lower mileage but not much lower it's like 205 this says 223 it was in way worse shape cosmetically and the thing sold for over 1500 and he got this one for 1100 total a few more miles on it but the maintenance is impeccable i ran the carfax in this truck before i told him to bid on it it was dealer maintained and it had some independent shop maintenance but good maintenance transmission services oil changes all logged and sure enough we looked at this truck today the oil is clean Transmission fluids clean, zero mechanical problems. All right, so my uncle just drove his new Sequoia. What do you think? For eight hundred fifty dollars, this is like the best bargain. Not, not even a, I would have paid two thousand for this. No, I would have paid two thousand for uh, it. I know. This, is, this, no, is a, this thing's phenomenal. There's not a thing wrong with it. They, they <laughs> live up to their. Own how, how was the oil? Clean. Clean transmission was, transmission, transmission fluid. pink, no, nothing stuck. Do, do you feel it shift? Yeah, smooth. Smooth as silk. You don't feel anything. How Just, about the four-wheel drive? Does that work? Uh, everything works on this. Steering's tight? Every, yeah, steering's tight. The 
Struts are good. Suspension, struts, everything. <laughs> a little clean up, this thing's going to look like And a it doesn't even need bucks. that much. And you know what's great? You have these wonderful winter mats yeah. that are already, they're, pre, they're cut to the Sequoia yeah. specifically. Yeah, yeah. These are Husky liners. I know. And you've got the WeatherTech in the back. Right. That's great because you can see it gets all dirty, but nothing touches your carpet. Right. A little, little power washing and uh, vacuum and boom, we're done. We're done. <laughs> even the battery's holding a charge now. No, crazy. <laughs> Well, anyway, folks, that's going to do it. I'm very happy for my uncle. He's got a new, reliable vehicle, and uh, it was a good replacement for his Lexus, and he has a bunch more money in his pocket, well, when he gets rid of that Audi. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for the next one.